Today, I would like to talk to you about the Salvation Army Mercy Seat. I'll mention its purpose, what it stands for, a wee bit of history and more besides. The Salvation Army website states, and I quote, Unique to the Salvation Army is the Mercy Seat, a consecrated place of prayer located at the front of the hall. The term Mercy Seat is unique to the Salvation Army, although most other denominations have their equivalent, such as the altar, place of prayer, and so on. But regardless of the name used, the purpose is still the same. It's a focal point where we can open up our hearts to Jesus. The Mercy Seat is not the only place that you can find Jesus, because he is always present. He is all around us. I accepted Jesus into my heart as a teenager, kneeling on the vestry floor in the Harper Memorial Baptist Church in Glasgow. It was late in a Tuesday evening with my pastor by my side. The vestry carpet was my mercy seat that night. I subscribed to the words of Samuel Logan Brengel when he said, I have carried a penitent form, that is mercy seat, around in my heart for half a century or more, and if there is ever any need, I constantly fly to thee. The first mention of the term mercy seat in the Bible can be found in Exodus chapter 25, verses 21 to 22, and I'm using the NRSV version. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the covenants that I shall give to you. And there I will meet you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on the ark of the covenant, I will deliver to you all my commands for the Israelites. The Israelites, aided and protected by God, were led by Moses on an exodus to freedom. They had endured 430 years of oppression and slavery in Egypt, where idolatry was rife. According to Bernard Anderson in his book, The Living World of the Old Testament, the Israelites wanted a God who was close to them physically and not distant in the heavens. They also wanted their gods to be compatible with their culture. The Israelites had proved to be troublesome and oh, they were always moaning and complaining. They also failed many times to trust in God, some preferring to worship idols. An incident of the latter ended with Moses shattering the two tablets containing the Ten Commandments written with God's hand and given to him in Mount Sinai. God instructed Moses to chisel out exact replicas of the two destroyed tablets containing the Ten Commandments. God then told Moses to place the replica tablets replica tablets and the broken pieces of the original tablets inside a 45 by 27 by 27 inch box made from acacia wood. The box became known as the Ark of the Covenant. The box had a lid made from solid gold which became known as the Mercy Seat. The Israelites were told by God to carry the Ark of the Covenant with them as a portable shrine for the remainder of their journey to the Promised Land. It was to be a visible sign to the Israelites that God was with them during their travels. Today, when we look at the mercy seat in the Salvation Army Hall, it reminds us that Jesus is with us in the building. The mercy seat is just a wooden structure, much the same as our hall is only bricks, wood and paint. But as soon as one person enters the hall, Jesus comes in with them. The mercy seat then becomes a sacred place and the focal point of our attention. It is a holy place where we can have a special conversation with Jesus. It's a place where we can share with Jesus the burden of our worries. It's a place to ask for his help and guidance. It's a place where we can pray for our loved ones. It's a place to thank Jesus for all that he has done for us. The mercy seat is also a place for people to go when they hear the call from Jesus to come to him. It's a place where we can confess our sins to God and experience the warmth of his loving forgiveness. I know how difficult it can be to take a few steps out walking towards the mercy seat to pour your heart out to Jesus 
for the first time. They can be the hardest steps that you will ever take. I know because I shared a similar experience myself. When my pastor invited people who wanted to accept Jesus to come to the front of the church, I could hear Jesus calling, but I couldn't move my legs. They were like blocks of lead. My heart wanted me to go to the front, but my legs would not move. Satan fought with me for three more days before I eventually went to see my pastor and welcomed Jesus into my heart. That night, I was washed by the blood of Jesus and he forgave my sins. Towards the end of most Sunday meetings, you will hear Salvation Army officers inviting you to come to the mercy seat. If you haven't already accepted Jesus, forget any inhibitions and put yourself first. Experience the saving grace of Jesus. We come to the front of the hall and to the mercy seat. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you.